What's up my ninjas, Dart Frog Ninja here, coming at you like a shuriken. Welcome to the fourth episode of The Dart Discussion. In this episode, I'll talk about basic care and setup for dart frogs. Now, this is a general how-to guide, which will give you basic parameters and conditions needed for dart frogs. More specialized care will be needed for whatever species you choose, so research, guys, research. Now, why should you get a poison dart frog? What do you need to successfully care for them? What about temperature and humidity? What do you need to feed them? And finally, what species are great to start with and why? Now, before we get started, I want to stress, guys, that poison dart frogs, poison arrow frogs, dart poison frogs, poison frogs, or whatever you call them, they are not poisonous in captivity. I repeat, they are not poisonous in captivity, unlike their namesake. Now, why aren't they poisonous in captivity, you ask? Well, poison dart frogs get their poison from insects they eat in the wild, mainly thought to be that of beetles and ants. Now, those beetles and ants eat poisonous plants, which the frogs then eat the insects, and then they convert that poison to their own personal defense system. So, if you buy captive bred frogs, you have nothing to worry about. But if you do buy illegally wild caught frogs, they're probably going to start off poisonous, but over time, they'll lose that said poison due to diet and captivity. Now, handling of the frogs should be kept to a minimum, and you should either wear powder-free latex gloves or rinse your hands with water and no soap and leave them damp if you're going to handle the frogs. Now, without further ado, let's get hopping! Okay, my ninjas, so you're interested in keeping poison dart frogs, but you think it may be too difficult? Well, I'm here to tell you that most species are relatively easy to keep and not too hard on your wallet either. Now, initially, the setup is going to be your biggest cost, but think of it as a long-term investment as dart frogs generally live 5 to 10 years in captivity with some species living up to 15 to 20 plus years if kept under the right conditions. Here are some reasons why you should get a dart frog. They are, highly they are brightly colored and make great showroom animals, much like a saltwater or freshwater aquarium. They are diurnal, meaning they're active during the daytime and go to sleep during the night. You get to have a slice of rainforest in your home. Who doesn't want that? I mean, look at that. They're low maintenance pets. You only have to spend a few minutes a day of any kind of feeding or tank maintenance. That's right, guys. No cleaning up poop or changing cage beddings. Different species have different mating calls. Some are loud like canary calls, some with low buzzes, others with sharp trills. So it makes you feel like you're in a jungle. By keeping dart frogs in a small way, you're helping conservation of the beautiful amphibians as many of their habitats are being destroyed. And these frogs will eventually become highly endangered or extinct at this current rate. Lastly, well, because you love frogs just like I do. I mean, who doesn't love these guys? I love my frogs. Next, I'm gonna tell you what you need to keep dart frogs. All right, my ninja, here's some basic supplies you're gonna need in order to keep dart frogs. First, you're gonna need a glass tank. You can use a regular 10 gallon aquarium tank or higher. Um, I prefer the front cage door opening exoterras, the zoom eds, and biopods. They allow easy access into your enclosure from the front. Plus, if you get a top one, a regular aquarium where you enter into the top, that can kind of sometimes stress out the dart frogs because in the wild, usually predators come from above so if you don't want to free them out you can do front door opening if not it's not a big deal you can still use a regular aquarium so just keep that in mind two you're gonna need yourself some drainage layer now this is leka or you can get perlite basically that goes in first that acts as a drainage layer it's going to have all where all the water drains down to it's going to keep it down there it's going to circulate the humidity um, and it's also going to keep the water from sitting in your uh, substrate and causing your substrate to rot so it you do need yourself some of this next you're going to need yourself a substrate barrier now this is a exoterra 
barrier that goes on top of the drainage layer and between that and the substrate layer. So that just keeps your substrate from sitting in the wet drainage layer. So there's that. Next, you're gonna need to get yourself some ABG mix or something extremely similar. This is ABG mix right here. Uh, it is nice and balanced. It is used for plants. Uh, it is so it's got the right kind of composition to help them be healthy. It's got some charcoal, some moss in there, as well as some bark and dirt. So that's good for your frogs. It's good for your plants. It's good for your microfauna. So you're going to need yourself some ABG mix or something similar to that. Next, you're, I don't have it displayed, but you'll need some live tropical plants, vines, ferns, bromeliads, mosses, stuff like that. Anything that does well in the tropical environment, get yourself some because your frogs are going to appreciate live plants. It's going to be better for them in the long run. Also, when you do get live plants, make sure that they are pesticide and chemical free and always give them a nice wash before adding them. Wash off any excess dirt and soil. You don't want any of that getting in your vivarium. So keep that in mind. Next, guys. You're gonna need some sphagnum moss. That's right. This guy's is going to go on top of your substrate and it's gonna keep the uh, substrate from clinging to your frog's skin. Like I said before, they don't really typically like too much to cling to their skin. They don't like dirt on them. So uh, just have that. And it also adds to the humidity and helps with the plants as well. And it gives your microfauna places to hide and eat as well. All right. So next, you're gonna need yourself some leaf litter right here. I have some magnolia leaf litter that I collected myself. I know it's got the dark frog connection bag. I just keep reusing the bag to hold it in. Um, but I collected this myself and I sterilized it. You're gonna need a leaf litter layer. You can use various different kinds of leaf litter. We, I went over that in the dart discussion. Uh, definitely check that out. I'll link a video to that so you, well, you can go and watch that. Next, guys. You're gonna, let's talk about lighting. You're gonna wanna get yourself some LED bulbs or strips. These are great for plants. Your dart frogs don't require any kind of UVA or UVB, so you don't have to worry about that. But they do, uh, the plants are gonna require a bright light source. So LEDs is the way to go, that seems to be the best. Um, and then you're gonna wanna get yourself a timer because you're gonna wanna have a 12 hour photo period. So the 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness. So there you go, that's lighting. Now next, you're gonna wanna get yourself a hand mister or a misting, automatic misting system like Mist King or the Exoterra Monsoon. I have here a hand mister. This is great for watering the plants. This is great for misting the tank. Um, luckily, I have the automated system in the biopod, so I don't have to worry about that too much anymore. But that's something that you need to think about down the long run. Now next, you can get wood accents like cork bark, driftwood pieces. Right here is a piece of Malaysian driftwood. Um, I haven't used it yet. I'll probably use some in the next setup. So that's an optional. You can get that, but it is good to have that because it acts as a uh, extra dimension for your tank. You can pull, prop it up so they can climb on it uh, or put it on the ground. You want to make it basically look like a forest fl jungle floor. Next, we have cocoa huts, guys. These things are used for breeding as well as hiding spots for your frogs. You just put it in there. You put it either a petri dish underneath it or put it on top of a nice white leaf. And there you go. You got yourself a hide and a place for your most of your dart frogs will breed at. Now, lastly, you're going to need yourself some springtails and isopods. That's going to make your vivarium bioactive and it's going to they're going to be the tank janitors. They're going to clean up the poop the fungus, any mold, decaying plant material, and they're gonna aerate your soil. So it's gonna make it a nice little ecosystem in there. So that way you don't have to do really any kind of maintenance. So again, springtails and isopods, there's different kinds you can get. I've gone over the ones I have. If you wanna look at some of my other videos, I show you how to set up cultures and how to keep them and uh, how to successfully breed them. So check that out. Now some optional things that you can use uh, are gonna be mosses like your sheet moss here. This is dried sheet moss. I went over moss in another video, again, another dart discussion. You can check that out. And then most of the exoterras and the Zoomid enclosures have a screen top. So chances are you're going to want to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get yourself a glass piece cut out. You can measure the top and width and then 
get that cut out and put it on top of your enclosures. That way it helps seal in the humidity and uh, keeps it nice and uh, the temperatures where it needs to be and the humidity where it needs to be. So that's it guys. This is basically all you need to keep dart frogs for a basic setup. Now next, I'm gonna talk about temperature and humidity. All right, my ninjas. Now for temperature and humidity, let's talk the temperature. For basic dart frog care, you're going to want to keep daytime temperatures from around 72 degrees Fahrenheit to no more than 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Nighttime temperatures, you're gonna want it to keep it around between 71 degrees, dropping to as low as about 68 degrees. Temperature can be maintained with under the tank heaters but they aren't always necessary. So if you have central heating and air, chances are it'll be fine because you can control your house temperature and that in turn, they won't get any colder than what your house is so, or warmer. So you really don't really need to worry about that. If you don't have central heating and air, um, I do suggest getting an under the tank heater as it will help with uh, keeping the tank nice and warm. Remember guys, they live in the rainforest. Some of them live in the cloud forest, but the rainforest never gets cold. It stays nice and warm and humid and damp. So make sure you do that. Uh, I would definitely make recommend buying a temperature gauge that you can either keep inside your enclosure or get yourself a digital temp gun. This one, I believe, yep, this one is made by Zoomed. Now all you do with a push of a button, you hold it down and it reads air temperature. Right now in my house, we're looking at about 72 degrees, which is what I have the central heating and air set to. So that's good. I know inside my enclosure, their ground temperature is around 74, 75 degrees, and then the air temperature is around 78 degrees. So again, invest in this, guys. It's very good. It's good to monitor it. And make sure your frogs are comfortable and happy and healthy. Next, let's talk about humidity. Now humidity should be kept in a range of between 60 to 90%. It doesn't have to stay constantly 90% as fluctuations are normal even in the wild. So if you're having trouble keeping humidity around 60%, I recommend getting a small water dish or right here, this is a nut pod, this is all natural. And introduce that to the tank. You make sure it's shallow because dart frogs are notoriously bad swimmers. And this is gonna help keep your humidity nice and nice and high because this is going to have act they're going to have water in here as well as it's going to give your frogs a place to soak if they need to or feel like it's a little too dry again buy a humidity gauge to monitor the levels that can goes inside your enclosure so that way you can tell what the humidity is at having a glass top on top of your enclosure it does help it seals in the humidity and it keeps the temperature nice where it needs to be but definitely invest in that and you should be good to go. Next, we're gonna talk about what to feed them. All right, my ninjas, let's talk about what you're gonna to need to feed your dart frogs. Now let's first, go over the staple diet that you're gonna need, which is gonna be flightless fruit flies. Now, melon gaster or hyde are gonna be the staple, and you're gonna need to keep and culture these. We're gonna need to make at least one culture a week, which is what I do since I only have two frogs at the moment. And then you're gonna need to keep these in your house, nice someplace, nice room temperature or warmer, so they can breed and you can feed from this. So if you don't like insects or someone in your house hates insects, probably gonna be an issue as you cannot just go out and buy these anywhere. You're gonna need to keep them so that way your frogs have something to eat. Next, you can do pinhead crickets or a sl something slightly larger, let's say one eighth inch or a quarter of an inch, depending on the size of your frog. My guys can eat a quarter of an inch cricket. Um, so I usually feed them one eighth or, one, or a quarter of an inch crickets. Pinheads are a bit too small for them, but for most other frogs, pinheads are gonna work beautifully. 
So keep that in mind. You can buy those. You don't have to breed those. You can breed them if you have a ton of frogs. I don't. So I go out and I buy them for every Friday, usually from Petco. Um, so there you go. Springtails. You're going to have springtails in there anyways for your tinier frogs. That is going to be a either staple food source like your thumbnails or it is going to be a, just a substitute food source, something that they can forage around and eat. So you'll have springtails already in there and we've already covered that. Same for isopods, depending on the breed of isopod you get they could vary in sizes so they can act as a substitute food source for all sizes of dart frogs bean beetles another easy to keep in culture beetle you basically keep them in a container like this i don't have any um, and you keep uh, regular beans in the bottom with i believe maybe a coffee filter in there they eat the beans they produce more and they're kind of they're basically kind of like weevils I'm thinking about getting some because they're high in protein and I want my frogs to breed and it offers them another source of food. There's worms, guys. Phoenix worms, extra small, tiny mealworms, and tiny wax worms. I do recommend the phoenix worms, guys, because they are really good for your frogs. They are um, high in protein. They're a little bit lower in fat content they come in various sizes extra small small medium and large um, so and then eventually they do turn into wasp looking like flies but they're called black soldier flies they don't bite even though they look like wasps so if a larva if the larva gets out in your tank chances are it's going to burrow down it's going to metamorphosize and it's going to turn into a black soldier fly so you might see them buzzing around your tank and your frogs chances are they'll probably catch them and eat them again they can't bite they don't have the ability to so you don't have to worry about them hurting your frogs so if you do see black flies flying around from phoenix worms don't worry they can't bite you lastly guys you got termites don't get those from out in the wild you can buy those from different vendors online and then aphids for your smaller dart frogs those are about the size of pinhead crickets good for your thumbnails um, you can get those again don't collect them from the wild you can get them from josh's frogs i believe they're one of the only dealers right now that's working with aphids so go ahead and get yourself some of those and that's another great food source so that's basically it for food next i'm going to go over great starter species and why you should get one of these frogs All right, my ninjas, we're gonna start off with great starter species for the new hobbyists. And I'm gonna say, first off, make sure you do your research on the species you'd like to keep first before jumping into this hobby. What I've given you out is the basic outline for what you need to keep these three frogs I'm gonna list. But if any of them strike your interest, do research. There's plenty of research materials out there. There's books, there's websites, there's forums, there's Facebook groups. You can ask me any specific questions. I can give you specific details. Right now, I'm just giving out basic care so you can get a basic setup set for your frogs. So with that said, I'm going to list off some great beginner frogs. And here's why they are great beginner frogs. First, they're bold, they're hardy, they're relatively low maintenance, they're very active. They can be a bit more forgiving to beginner mistakes. They're larger dart frogs and they're relatively cheaper. I started with these guys myself around 18 years ago and they got my love of dart frogs, uh, let's say even in, in deepened into myself. I don't even know if that's a word, but that's what I'm gonna go with. So they helped my passion for dart frogs grow. So here are the three species I recommend starting with. First, you got Dendrobates tinctorius azirius, the blue poison dart frog. Dendrobates leucamelis, the yellow banded or bumblebee poison dart frog. And Dendrobates aratus, the green and black poison dart frog. These species are again recommended for the reasons I explained above. I left out a couple of other species that are fine for beginners due to either the price of the frog or the actual size of the frog like thumbnails. Now after you get the basic care down and are successful with keeping one of the species I mentioned above, you can move on to other species of dart frogs such as other tincturius, phyllobates like the guys I have, or thumbnail dart frogs. 
Last two points, please keep one species per tank. Do not mix species. It is important you don't do that as dart frogs are incredibly territorial, more, some species more than others. So if you mix different species, there might be tank fights. You might get injuries or even death. So you don't want to mix for that reason. Two, do, they will hybridize. Some dart frogs will breed with each other. So you might get a Luca melis or a, an Aratus. They might breed and they might create a completely hybridized frog. Not good guys, you don't want to do that. Ho hobbyists such as myself, we like to keep the lines pure um, because again, this is for conservation purposes. So we want the frogs as they appear in the wild to appear in captivity the same way. And in case that, like I said, they become extinct, we have those pure bloodlines. We have those pure frogs as they appear in wild in captivity. Um, so again, it's bad for your frogs to mix. Don't do it. I don't recommend it. I've seen people do it. They say it's fine, but again, there's places that just hybridize them and then they, if you know, if you're in the hobby, you know the place I'm talking about, then they sell them as a trademark species, which is just bad, so don't do it. So keep that in mind, guys. And again, do your research before you buy any frogs so you can ensure proper care is given to them and that they live long, happy, healthy lives, and hopefully maybe you'll even get breed, uh, breeding happening. Uh, it's pretty cool. I've had it happen a couple of times with my guys. I'm hoping that they'll start again soon. The rainy season's coming up in April, so we'll see what happens. Again, guys, thank you for watching. Check back next week for the next episode of the Dart Discussion. Check me out on Instagram, and I now have Twitter. Bing! At Dart Frog Ninja. And then you can do a search for me on Instagram, Dart Frog Ninja, and I'll pop up. You'll see my logo as my main profile picture, so you'll know it's me. There you can see more pictures and behind the scenes look at my frogs' lives, as well as my own. Please, guys, like, subscribe to my channel, and comment for more videos. The more subscribers I get, the more videos I'm going to keep putting out, the more content I'm going to keep putting out. Thank you for your continued support, guys. And frog on.